Hello everyone, it's Destroyer here with a Rival Kingdoms video about Kingdoms and Kingdom Wars. Once you've upgraded your Stronghold to level 4, you'll be able to join a Kingdom or create your own for a small amount of gold. I have a mini village here called YouTube74 that's already created its own Kingdom, which I named Destroyer74. It's the only member so far, so it does hold the title of King, which is positioned right here in the middle. If you're using a female avatar, you'll be the Queen. When I tap on the King, you'll see that it has a Harvest Gold bonus. This means that the Smelters will produce 3% more gold. The King has full control over the Kingdom, allowing him to change the settings, change people's roles, accept new members and kick existing members. There's several other roles such as Lord. Lords manage members and assign roles. A Lord can change other people's roles, however they cannot make someone else a Lord or demote a Lord. They can accept new members and kick existing members. Another role is Sentinel. The primary benefit of being a Sentinel is a defensive bonus. This is effective during Kingdom Wars and also during multiplayer attacks. This role is commonly requested when people's shield is about to expire. Then we have the Raider role, which gives you bonus gold during multiplayer attacks. This is the most commonly sought after role when people come online to use their battle stones. Another role is Commoner, which is the default role and doesn't have any additional perks. Then there's the Squire role. This is typically used for lower level strongholds since they won't be included in the Kingdom War lineup, however they can attack the enemy during the war. Lastly, there's one role called Outcast. With the exception of the title, this role is currently no different to Commoner, so maybe you'll want to send someone here if they've been misbehaving. There's several Kingdom projects in the Kingdom, such as Farm and Council Hall. So let's go through each one and discuss what their function is. First take note of the Kingdom Fame in the top left corner. A new Kingdom will begin with 7 Fame. Ok, let's have a look at this project called Farm. A new Kingdom will have a 25 member capacity, however you can increase this by making donations. Once it's received 240 donations from the Kingdom members, it will upgrade to level 1 which will increase the member limit to 30 as well as give you 2 additional fame. I'll donate 235 gold to this now and you'll see that it now has a 3 hour cooldown before I can donate to it again. And there's also something in the middle which shows that I earned 47 loyalty points for my contribution. Loyalty points are used to buy loyalty chests. I did post a video about loyalty earlier on so you can click on this link to watch that later. Next is the Raiders Guild and this will control the number of Raiders you can have. Similar to the farm, a level 1 upgrade will give you 2 more Kingdom Fame and takes 240 donations. The Tavern project is locked until your Kingdom has 10 Fame. Upgrading this project will increase the percentage of bonus loot for villagers in the Raider role. There's a Kingdom Troop Portal which you can build if you're part of a Kingdom. The level 1 upgrade will allow you to upgrade your Troop Portal to level 2. The higher the Troop Portal level, the more Troop Slots and higher Troop Levels it will provide. The next project is called Gatehouse. Upgrading this will increase the number of Sentinels you can have. This is a very powerful role, hence why it costs rings to upgrade. Just next to it is the Watchtower, and this project controls the percentage of defense the villagers will receive in this Sentinel role. Over here is the Squire Training Project. Upgrading this role will increase the number of Squires you can have. In the far right is a project called Council Hall. Upgrading this will increase the number of Lords your Kingdom can assign. Next to that is the Royal Mint. Once unlocked, you can upgrade it to increase the percentage of Harvest Gold bonus for the Lords. So you do have several projects to start working on. Once you level two of them up, you'll have enough Kingdom Fame to start working on the others. The higher levels do require more Fame too, so you can't just concentrate on upgrading a single project. Let's take a quick look at the Kingdom Wars. There's four different Leagues. Since this is a new Kingdom, it will have to compete in Melee League. This League has two Kingdoms going head to head in a one day war, where the winning Kingdom will be promoted to Sword and the losing Kingdom will remain in Melee. Melee does require 5 members in order to start, and only the King or Lord can start it. The other three Leagues involve 6 Kingdoms. Each Kingdom will go head to head with the other 5 Kingdoms over a 5 day period. You can win your way from Sword League to Axe League and also get demoted back down to Sword League, however you can never return to Melee. Melee and Sword League have Gold Rewards, however Arrow and Axe are Ring Rewards. 
Let's jump on over to my main village, which is a higher level kingdom called Epic Nerds. This kingdom is heavily upgraded, however there's still a few roles upgrading. There's 44 of 46 members here. If you look at the farm project, you'll see that it goes to at least 48 members, but I do suspect that it will go to 50. Kingdom Troop Portal also goes to a very high level. You can unlock at least a level 7 Kingdom Portal. The Raiders Guild and Tavern Guild are maxed here. This will give you 4 Raider slots and a 25% gold bonus. Squires Training is max level, which gives you 4 Squire slots. Gatehouse takes a while to level up, but it can give you at least 4 Sentinel slots. The Watchtower can go to level 4, which will give your Sentinels a 30% defensive health bonus. That's an insane amount, hence why it costs a lot of rings which are quite precious. Council Hall is maxed, you can have up to 7 Lords. And the Royal Mint is also maxed, which gives your Lords a 12% Harvest Skull bonus. The King also gets the same Harvest Skull bonus as the Lords. If I tap on the War button, you'll see that it's already been declared. You'll be put into a queue and the War will eventually start once 6 Qualifying Kingdoms have declared. So we finally got a matchup, and here you can see the standings which show the 6 Kingdoms that are in this War. The top prize is 600 rings. The next two kingdoms will win 400 rings, and number 4 will actually win 200 rings. Only the top two kingdoms will remain in Axe League, and the bottom four will be demoted to Arrow League. If you look at the schedule, you can see who attacks who each day. The attacks can be done at any time over the 23 and a half hour raid day, and there's a 30 minute break at the end before the next raid day begins. Here it shows that Epic Nerds is up against Junkies today. Day 2 is against For the Honor. Day 3 is against Canada, followed by Special K and lastly against Crusaders. If you go back to the Standings tab, you can click on Battle. There's a lineup of 10 bases to attack, which are mostly rated from weakest to strongest defensive levels. There's mostly Commoners in the early lineup, and the Lords and Sentinels will typically be closer to the King, which is always the last base in the lineup. So there's a maximum of 10 bases to attack. The first base will give you 5 loyalty points for the win, and it's also worth 5 war points too. The next base is worth 10 loyalty points, but I cannot attack this one yet until I beat base 1. So you must attack and beat all the bases in order from base 1 to 10. If we take a look down at the end again, you'll see that the king is worth the most, which is 150 loyalty points. If you add up all of these points, it will be a maximum of 375. If you click on the scores in the top right corner, it will bring up the list of the daily scores. Your kingdom is on the left, and the enemy kingdom is on the right. If I scroll down, you'll see that Epic Nerds has more members. All the members can attack during the war, however excess scores will not count towards the total. So if it's 30 members versus 40 members, only the top 30 scores will count. If you tap on this 5 in the top left corner, you'll see that this is your morale. You lose morale if you fail to beat one of the attacks. Once you run out of morale, you can no longer attack, so you may lose 4 times on one hard base, then manage to beat it, then you'll be left with only one morale. If you lose one more attack, it's the end of your attacks for the raid day, however you will start with 5 morale on the next raid day. If I scroll all the way to the left, you'll see a bridge dividing the two rival kingdoms. On the left hand side is all the epic nerds bases. As you can see we're quite tough, so this is the sort of kingdom you might come up against in Axe League. Here I am in the lineup at base number 5. It does take a snapshot of your base before the raid day starts, so it's important that you have your Primus Conduits charged. Also note that all upgrading defences will be active during the raid day, so make sure you have them in position before the day starts. Junkies may have done a good job climbing up to the Axe League, however they are up against a really tough war today. Here's base 1. You can scout before you attack, and also view a replay of another member beating the base. This will be an easy one for me since I am Stronghold 14 up against the Stronghold level 4. You'll notice that there's no defences upgrading here. There's also no loot in the war, you just need to take down the Stronghold to win. On the victory screen you'll see that I won both 5 loyalty points and 5 war points. The war points will contribute to the raid day score. Now that I defeated the first base, you'll see that I've moved onto the second base now, which is worth 10 points. That will continue on until you reach the king. Let's check on the scores again. 
Under each player's avatar there's a green bar which represents their morale. Everyone here currently has 5 morale since the raid day has just begun. You can take your time with these attacks since the raid day does last 23 and a half hours. This cross sword icon over here will bring up the war standings and the schedule. On the right hand side of the kingdom names it lists the raid day wins as well as the points tally. If the wins happen to be a tie at the end of the 5 days, the winner will be decided by the total points. There are a couple of kingdom chats. The kingdom league chat is for all 6 kingdoms to chat together. The kingdom raid chat is only for the 2 kingdoms in the raid day, which in my case is epic nerds and junkies. At the end of the raid day you'll see a results screen. If your kingdom happens to win for the day, you'll receive a further 500 loyalty points. The next raid day will begin 30 minutes later. If it happens to be the last raid day, you'll see the final results for the Kingdom War. Epic Nerds happen to come in first place here, so that's a 600 ring reward for each member that was in the Kingdom for the entire duration of the war. Do note that in order to receive the ring reward, you must be in the Kingdom before the war is declared, and you must remain in the Kingdom until the final war results come in. If you leave at any time and join back again, you'll not receive anything. However, if you are in the Kingdom for the entire duration of a raid day, you can attack bases and also win the 500 loyalty points at the end. Once the war has ended, you can go back into the war page. You'll see that the Kingdom has a 12 hour cooldown before you can declare again. Well, I hope I've answered all your questions about Kingdoms and Kingdom Wars. I'm sure both of these will keep evolving over time, so I'll be sure to bring you updates if and when that occurs. Keep an eye out on my Twitter as I'll more than likely do some live streams on Twitch during some of my tougher wars. Bye!